This right here is a PC in a tiny form factor. This is the B-Link SER4 mini Windows PC with Windows 11 Pro and packed full of specs that were really surprising to me. So I'm gonna talk about this and I'm gonna compare it to the M1 Mac Mini because that is a system that I use quite often. I also like using a Windows PC from time to time. And this device is really enticing because it doesn't take up a lot of space and it comes with some decent specs, but I wanted to talk about performance and overall experience using this as a, uh, as a PC, as a desktop PC, and where I might see something like this being most useful. So let's walk around the device really quick. It's, it's really small. I mean, it's, it's about the size of a modern day Apple TV, maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. On the front, we've got two USB 3 ports and a USB-C, a headphone jack, and the power button. And then we have a uh, clear CMOS uh, little pinhole button on the front, which um, I don't know why that would need to be on the front, but it's there. And it is a typical PC function that... Um, most people won't ever use. But moving to the back, we've got fins for our fan, and we also have uh, air intake on the top and the sides as well. And then we have the output on the back of the device here. We have a uh, uh, Ethernet LAN support here, two USB ports, uh, one is USB 3, one is not. And then we have two HDMIs, and then the DC jack for the power, uh, the power plug. And so that is self-contained, it comes with it, and so that plugs in and it is DC volts uh, that go in. And so you do have to run it with the power uh, adapter that comes with it. And uh, it has a, a decent length cord and just plugs right in, support up to two monitors and all that good stuff. So not a bad little device. I mean, it looks pretty decent, uh, very, very clean and sleek. But as far as performance, what were my experiences? Well, uh, a lot of things that I typically will do on a computer is photo editing, a little bit of gaming. Um, I uh, do some stock trading, and so I'll use uh, some tools there. And so I installed all these apps on this device. Now, this device, let's just quickly talk about the specs. This is a Ryzen 7 4800U that uh, supposedly gets up to 4.2 gigahertz. It is an eight core, 16 thread processor, which uh, with 16 gigabytes of RAM is pretty darn good. I mean, this is gr this, these are great specs. I have a Windows PC that I built that is several years old now that is a Threadripper PC, so also AMD. It does have significant more RAM and it has a discrete, uh, or it has its own GPU, but, um, this has really good specs. And so I had really high expectations going into utilizing this little device, knowing that the graphics performance probably wasn't gonna be the best, but as far as performance that is uh, reliant on CPU, I should be pretty well dialed in. So it also has 500 gigs of storage on this device. So Performance wise, the first thing that I did was install Adobe Lightroom and I did an export of 80 photos that I made sure were stored locally so it didn't have to download them and exported those 80 photos. It almost took 10 minutes to do that. It was about nine and a half minutes that it took to export those photos. I then ran the same test on the Mac Mini M1 that also has 16 gigabytes of RAM and it took uh, half that time. It took exactly half just about that time to perform that task. So I was already a little concerned because if I was going to use something like this as a desktop uh, PC alternative, it's gonna need to perform similar to a, a Mac, an M1 at least. And so that didn't start out too well. So I thought, well, let's switch over to some games. And so I installed Steam and the first thing that I installed was the lawn mower simulator, lawn mowing simulator, and that was totally unplayable. While moving the lawn mower around, attempting to mow, I would average between four to six frames per second, which is just so bad that it was impossible to play. I had to close it down. Now that game isn't available on the Mac, so I installed Untitled uh, Goose Game and played that a little bit. Of course, on the M1 Mac, I could get 60 frames per second pinned, not a frame less, not a frame more. I think that's the maximum uh, that's supported. And then over on this little PC, 
I would get pretty close to 60, but it would often dip down into the mid 50s. And then occasionally the game would just start lagging a bit, which I think was more uh, on the performance end. It would start lagging and it was uh, becoming a little bit difficult to play. So light games are probably going to be okay on this, but I also consider like the lawn mowing simulator uh, to be a light game or a relatively light game. I did not expect it to just literally crush this little, this little computing device here. Um, now the fans weren't coming on, nothing was really coming on to signify that this thing was under a huge load. Even when I was doing the Lightroom export, never did I hear the fans rev up. And I know what the fans sound like when they would rev up because when you power this thing on, the fans will rev up a little bit. It even comes with a, uh, a label on it that says, when you turn it on, the fans are gonna rev up. It's not a problem, it's just what it does. It's a self-check type of thing. And so you can hear the fans, but I don't hear the fans whenever things are, um, uh, whenever I've, I've got a load uh, on this little PC. So typically a, another test that I would run would be a rendering test with Adobe Premiere Pro, but I decided not even to go uh, down that road because if it's gonna take double the amount of time to export uh, 80 images in Lightroom, and I'm gonna get four to six frames per second in a game like a lawn mowing simulator in Steam, then I know that the rendering performance on this thing is going to be miserable. So this device, uh, the reason that I decided to buy it is because it is currently on sale. Um, it's right now it's 639 uh, even US on Amazon and there's a $40 coupon. And so I decided to give it a go because I think that there is a really good use case for a PC like this. Now, of course, I also have the Mac Mini M1, and that is going to do much more for me. I've been using the Mac Mini M1 since it came out, and it has 16 gigs. It has, I believe, a terabyte or maybe two terabytes of storage in it, and that device renders photos out in Lightroom really well. I can edit video. Of course, I typically use Final Cut on that device, and it, and it renders out really well. I don't use Premiere. This Premiere, um, even though it's fast and is very well optimized for M1, I just find that Final Cut is a little bit faster. So uh, already I'm looking at this device, this little B-Link PC, as not something that I'm going to be able to use for anything medium to heavy lifting as far as the typical work that I would do. But what it is excellent for is web browsing and light, more light applications. I had uh, the web browser open with multiple tabs. I had email open. I had a lot of things going on and it did a good job at multitasking, at jumping around and getting between applications. It runs Windows 11 Pro on this particular model. And so coming with Windows 11 Pro and the specs that it has and the footprint size that it is, it's a really good value when it comes to PCs. I mean, of course, you'd get more performance out of building something that had uh, a, a bigger motherboard, a bigger graphics card in it, but you're probably gonna have a hard time building out too much for around the $600 price point after you apply the coupon. Uh, $600 is what you're paying for uh, for this little guy. And so while you can sacrifice on other things like less RAM and less processor so that you had a little bit of budget left over for a better graphics card, you then are gonna end up with a much larger PC that probably doesn't have the port availability, that probably isn't going, that's probably gonna use a lot more electricity than something like this. And this type of device I think is a very attractive to those that don't need that additional graphics performance. You're looking for something that is just for desktop PC use, web browsing, email, uh, various other applications, maybe some productivity work. Um, something like this is going to be an absolute fantastic solution for you. So there are cheaper alternatives as well with uh, smaller processors, less RAM and all of that stuff. The reason that I went with this particular model uh, is because it was closest in specs that I could find to the Mac Mini M1. Now there is one model higher that comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM, and was I going to do this all over again? I would spend the extra, 
whatever it is, $70 or so to get the 32 gigabytes of RAM because I think with this not having much graphics performance, you need to give it all the help that it can get by adding in some additional RAM. So that is uh, currently $699 US and is uh, available with a $50 coupon. So I guess for $50 more, you can get 16 more gigabytes of RAM and, uh, and a fantastic small tiny PC that can do an awful lot. It's just not gonna be for heavy lifting. So the M1 Mac for its size is really hard to compete with. You've got uh, basically something that's about just as tall as this device, a little bit larger as far as the footprint, but a ton more performance and also low energy use and a small footprint on your, uh, on your desk or your tabletop as well. So if you're wanting Windows PC, I think this little guy, the B-Link, is gonna be a great option. Uh, especially with the size, the energy consumption being extremely low, all the ports that are available, dual monitor support, um, and something that you can easily just put in a bag and take with you, uh, and, and it's, it's very much mobile. So a nice option for those of you that are Windows users and prefer the Windows platform. So I got links down in the description for you below to this little guy. I, I just, I really like it. I do wish that it had a bit better graphics performance, but for most of your lightweight use, you're gonna find this being the perfect solution for something that has Windows 11 and for something that is going to have all the performance for your everyday needs. If you have any questions or thoughts, let me know down in the comment section below. If you want more content on PCs, small devices like this, definitely let me know. I love checking this stuff out. However, most of the videos that get the traction on this channel have to do with smartphones and technology like that. So use the comment section down below to ask questions and even make some recommendations as I like to listen and take part in those conversations with all of you. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for being here today and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.